Hello, everybody, and welcome to another very special VIP tournament here on Ultimate Golf. These are a fun chance for you to play alongside some celebrities, some pros, some fellow players. We throw some missions at you. As you complete those missions, you're going to get a chance to win some fantastic prizes. Now, we are joined today by someone who's been playing this game almost three and a half years. He is definitely one of the OG UG players. He's not just a player, he's also my friend, Royal King Webbo. What's going on, buddy? I don't feel right, man. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Go ahead, hit your tee shot on one there, Webbo, and then we'll start our conversation. Webbo's going to be playing Whispering Pines. Now, the reason we picked Whispering Pines for Webbo is because, and I don't know if you know this, Webbo, this was the very first tournament you ever played in Ultimate Golf, was 18 holes at Whispering Pines, and you shot a minus 15. <laughs> Let's do that again and win people prizes. Yeah, exactly. So Webbo is known mostly, not mostly, you're a good community guy. But uh, your Royale play is off the charts. That is your bread and butter. I would like to think it's, uh, I don't know, is it, is it your favorite part of the game, Royales? Why don't you tell me? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I don't have a very good attention span. <laughs> so I hope that's quick and, and uh, I like it. Um, so uh, tournaments, I, I mean, Early on in the game, I, I didn't really like tournaments, but I've sort of got enjoyed them more as I've got a bit better. And uh, yeah, but Royals are my thing. Like anything, it's a little more enjoyable when you when you do better, of course. And uh, you've definitely turned your tournament game around. You're a pretty decent tournament player now. I do believe you even came first in the round one of a CCC a couple ago. So uh, <laughs> I, th I think you've proved you can play. Yeah. A broken watch is right twice a day, Duff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Big drop there on one. So you noticed Webbo is using a Pro D ball. So that is for your guy's benefit. He's going to fly around Whispering Pines here using nothing but a Pro D. Let's see what kind of round he can put up. Let me just check if I've got enough of them. Yeah, <laughs> you might have enough. How many you got? He's got a lot. 30... 3,500 Pro Ds. That's just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> so you started playing this game, Webbo, April 11th, 2020. So that was great. COVID had just hit. The world was in a weird place. Definitely. Were you a mobile gamer before that? Or was this a was this your first foray into playing kind of a, a mobile sports game? <laughs> I did that on purpose, though. Look at that. Off the cart oh. path. Um oh. So I've never played I've never played mobile games before this. I've never really been a gamer really. Um but like you said when um COVID hit it was just I, I stumbled on it by accident really. You want I think it just been released maybe maybe that that week. Yeah, it was brand new. Though. Um and I found it by accident and then kind of got enjoyed it and got in with a few of you guys so probably realistically only about 100 people playing back then but definitely with royals well, remember royals so royals back then we used to have the chat right 10 minutes before each royale they were only once an hour instead of on the 20 oh, yeah. minutes cadence that we have now and we all used to pile in and chat and it was me and big easy but then you guys were kind of running the show so it was you lfc and there's a couple other guys, a couple Canadians in there. I remember 401, Roadkill, Roscoe was in there. A few of the other old, old guys. Fat but Cat uh, Fat Cat, yeah, he was original as well. Now, tell us the story of where the Elite moniker came from and that whole, uh, how that came to be. Nice shot, by the way. Uh, that's just because we're opposite best. <laughs> no, um, so... Back, back when chat was allowed in trials, we used to just uh, jump in every hour, and most of us had it on on a, an alarm clock back then. And um, it was just friends jumping in to play, and somebody took a bit of an exception to it. 
and uh, called us all elite goons. <laughs> I think was the terminology. Maybe, maybe it was a bit more of a choice choice word. Yeah, might but, have been. <laughs> um, so it just stuck, and every time then I joined after that, I just said hi elite and waved at everybody, and it stuck from that point of view. But obviously, most people don't realise that. It uh, it was quite funny. So it was, and I'll go into the backstory on our side too. So it was, you guys were all elite, and you guys had all changed your your logos. Obviously, you had some sort of like a Facebook chat or something going. And then yeah. me and me and Big Easy were left all on our own, and we were still uh-huh. like we were good at Royals, but we were coming second to you guys. You guys were always beating us. Easy maybe was doing a little better, but I was always coming second. So we thought, hey, these buggers, they've started their own little group. Let's start one. So I remember we got Jason in early, and then a couple other guys, and then uh, we kind of had two competing teams going for a little while there, but then country clubs formed, and then that was the beginning of Whiskey Business. So that was Whiskey Business, was uh, Big Easy and my little group, and then your group all coming together, and look where did we you, are now, Webbo. <laughs> did you say some nice words about us back then? Um, I think LFC and I definitely got to do it a little bit once or twice, but then we discovered that we had a mutual interest in aviation, and then, uh, and then once kind of we made up, and then I, I, you and I started chatting a bit, and then, like, for real, like, you're just, you're, you're a dude I met on, on Ultimate Golf, but, like, you're my buddy, you're my friend, is this our, uh, do we hug now, is that how this works? I'm an emotional guy at a minute, mate, so yeah, carry on. Yeah, 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 our, our little fun... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's have a little moment. No, but but I mean the, the elite guys. We had a chat in there. You know, everybody in the world were going through tough times with COVID and things like that, and 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 everyone deals with it differently. So to be there for everyone is just. I mean, that's pretty much me, really. I like I'm a people person. Um, sometimes I get a bit too passionate. I appreciate that, but um, this game just brought everybody together, and I think. As much as everyone, there's a few little ding dongs happens, but I think in the main, people stick up for each other a lot on this game. There's definitely a sense of camaraderie and friendship, and and I've heard it said before: is is you come for the game, right? And and the, the game's obviously outstanding, but you, you stay for the people, and, and that's definitely something that's happened. And, and like we've known each other for over three years, I, I got a whole pile of people I haven't known for three years. It, it's pretty damn cool it's not just the it's not just that it's where you go it's it's where you go for support and advice and obviously we play the game a lot and, and stuff like that but you know i've had a couple of rough instances in, in my life where whiskey business people that i've met through the game have been there for me so amazing i'll never forget it to be honest so yeah it, it truly is and um we can take. I can go a little off script here and tell a little sidebar story that we uh, we recently in whiskey business started like a little uh, a little mental health like channel in our group chat, and that's something we use. Where there's you can just go in there, non judgmental, non anything, uh, no jokes allowed, no nothing, just somewhere to rage, rant, cry, laugh, complain about some whatever you want, and it, it's man, it's useful. I've used it, you've used it, we've all used it. It's uh, yeah. so guys. Find something out there. Don't be afraid to talk, even if it's someone random. But anyway, you're talking about getting through times and whatnot. We gotta, we gotta talk about the elephant, not the elephant, but that broken leg yeah. in the room. Webbo, yeah. as the supreme top level peak athlete that you are, out playing football, as you call it, soccer for the rest of the world, goes down with a major, major injury. Tell us about that night I mean I've played football all my life three or four times a week forever I'm a big lad but I still play play centre mid uh, reasonably fit for a chubber <laughs> and um, I I I got kicked from the back um, sorry I'll rephrase that in, in American English I got kicked from behind there you go <laughs> and um my knee overextended. I think I saw an NFL player do a similar injury this week where it was pretty serious. Nick Chubb, yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. could watch it. <laughs> uh, and my patella tendon just snapped clean, and so I've had to have surgery. And basically, <sighs> I haven't been able to sit up, stand up, walk for six weeks. 
So Wubbo is normally a very handsome, clean-shaven individual who uh, doesn't sit in that couch all day long. But now there is a imprint right there where he's sitting. And look at that glorious beard that he's got going. It's all right, Jim Wiggin it. It's all right, buddy. Looking good. A little less gray than I got, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit jealous. I am. Um... I've never tried to grow one before. I can't get out of the house. I can't shave properly or the sink comfortably, so I've just left it. And then you timed this perfectly and said, why don't you come on? So here I am looking a bit. You look rough. fine, buddy. You look fine. Minus eight through five here at Whispering Pines. He's already over halfway to what his very first mm -hmm. tournament round was in Ultimate Golf. Oh, so many years ago. I'm not really paying a lot of attention. But... So three and a half years. So three and a half years you've been playing this game. I've got some stats here for you, Webbo. We're, we're going to trickle these out maybe over the course of a couple of holes. This isn't going to make me look like a... No, 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 we're good. We're good. As long as your wife doesn't watch and sees how many... Uh... No, how many balls I've bought. <laughs> so tournament one was Whispering Pines. How many tournaments have you played between now and then? That include replays? Nope, just tournaments. Then, huh? 2,000? 1,971. 2,000, great Ooh. guess. 1,971 tournaments. Is that not crazy? Nice eagle there by Webble, by the way. We'll pause for a second. First eagle on a par four on number six. He's number. He's minus ten through six. Yeah, almost two thousand. Next week you'll hit your two thousand tournament. Pretty impressive. I, impressive. I, I'm sure I mean, people. I, 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 early on, I just played him for the sake of playing him. I didn't really try and, and probably one in ten where I try really hard now and and rest. I just kind of fly through. But that's how I like to do it. And you might see me and think, oh, he's tanking it, but. Um, Honestly, not tanking it deliberately ever. <laughs> I'm nah. just, this is more like how I play, but obviously I've got numbers and I'm just eyeballing this. But so well. Webo is using the Pro D1 for this entire tournament. Of course, you guys at home, we're gonna have those missions set up for you as you complete those missions. You're gonna get some balls. You're gonna get some some pins. You're gonna get some game cash. You're going to get all sorts of things that you can use those and hopefully translate those into better rewards or CC points or whatever it is you like in other modes of play. Yeah, win, win stuff, guys. Come on. So, Royales, big part of your game early on. Did you have a favorite Royale from back in the day? And is it still around? Now is our chance to petition the powers that be to maybe bring it back. Mm. What is your all-time favorite Royale. I like T Royale, me. Yeah, T Royale's my, probably my favorite. Get it. Oh, look at this. Oh! That's not an easy shot. That was like a very <laughs> decent, outside of no adjust range, hive with the Pro D1. Webo back to back Eagles. He's sitting at 12 under through 7. Uh, we've spoken about this before too. I like the Royales that have a little bit of variety. I don't want to just hit them bang, 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 great right quick off the hop, uh, do the same shot repetitively. Now, some people like that, and that's their prerogative. By all means, like those ones all you want. I personally, I like the ones with the mix. I like the T Royale because nobody, nobody can go as quick to get as many shots off as me, so it's an easy win, really. Um, if I were choosing one, HT18's like a slightly good one. It's got a put in it, it's got a variety of different shots, you can change your clubs up a bit. That's that's a good one. Um, there's a load that I'd like to see come back and, and obviously we've had a drastic change of rails recently and I managed to play a lot of them, but um, I'd like to see some of the older ones come back. They'll, uh, I have a feeling you're going to see them back. We'll get these new ones, uh, give, them, give them some time to marinate a little bit, soak up a little bit of the uh, what's going on out there in the UG world. And then we'll we'll see some of the ones back. Um, what about the gauntlets? Come on, give me I the do. gauntlets. I like the gauntlets. The one shots kind of replace those that we got on Fridays. But if you want gauntlets back, 
Maybe. Oh, look at this. A little more backspin and that goes. Nice approach. Look at Webbo giving a clinic here with the Pro Ds. And he's not using a grid. He's not using an app. He's just playing fast and he is doing fantastic. So, Royales, you guys kind of changed the game with Royale. So, before, uh, it was a lot of aiming or maybe just letting the needle pass and letting it go left and right the, and adjusting for the wind that way. But the goal was always to try and get it as close to the tee as possible every single time, and you would, you would take some time to do that. Whereas, you guys kind of figured out pretty quickly that the quick shot and quantity over quality might be the better way maybe you can take us back to those early days in your elite group and and how did that conversation come about with how did you guys figure it out because you guys dominated well you still do but you dominated royales for a very long time with that quick shot so i think i think i actually joined a week after everybody else um and then um uh, I ended up getting invited and it blew my mind some of the scores. I think Milner, Scott Milner, what? Milnes? Milner? Yeah. Milnes, I can't remember. He, yep. he was the original person that came up with that, uh, the quick shot. And and you sort of think, what am I doing wrong? Am I playing a different game to these? And, and yeah. you know what I'm like, I just, I'm nosing me, I'm straight to point, so I just asked a question. I said, how are you scoring so high? And uh, then I found out the quick shot and then just played and played and played and played and um, that's how I got good and, and literally I'm more accurate now quick shotting than I am if I yeah. actually paid paid attention so when we're using the word quick shot so what that means is Royales is and you can search YouTube and, and, and actually we'll get to that in a minute and, and see what these players do so a quick shot is just a real quick finger thumb movements to apply basically full backspin right away and then take a quad, uh, shot really really quick without ever adjusting your aim and what that'll allow you to do is get off 11 12 sometimes 13 14 shots in a two minute royale now you do give up a little bit of accuracy while you're learning this method you, you stick with it you can actually get pretty accurate with it but you get the quantity and you'll find your scores will like you'll double your TV scores in a Royale just by getting good at this method. Might have a little go at the green here, hey, eh? with that tailwind. But speaking of YouTube channels, Webo has a yeah. YouTube channel of his own, Ultimate Golf Elite. That's what you're gonna put in that search bar. What uh, what prompted you to join down that world, Webo? And how have you enjoyed streaming so far? That shot were awful, by the way. Um, uh, it was it was garbage. <laughs> I, do you know what? Um, it goes back to people just asking questions and me wanting to help grow the game originally. Literally, that is why I created the page just for fun. Um, and you get it, it. It does make me feel good when people enjoy it, you know. And and they get better, and you can see tangible improvements in people, and you think it's quite good. Um, so I just. It's all fun for me, really. Um, and, yeah. So, I've been told that that's not the only time you've ever taught golf. Um, and good on you for doing this. Um, you used to teach golf, and then you used to also teach kids and adults with disabilities golf. And yeah. uh, what a fantastic opportunity uh, for you and for them. Maybe you could tell a little bit about what brought you into that and uh, what kind of experience uh, that was. Yeah, um, it, I mean, I don't think I told you that. Um, oh. I, cool. I, I, <laughs> oh, it's almost like I might have done some research. I, so, uh, long, I'll, I'll, I'll have to go back a few years. So, uh, I was a pretty good junior golfer. Uh, and I played for county and then I went to golf college in England and uh, decided I wanted to be a pro golfer and I worked at driving range lo local to me and the Dis Disabled Golf, so golf Foundation, I can't remember the full name of it but uh, they, they approached and said we're, we're setting up this charity, I want, we want to use you and I basically offered my time to, to teach, I taught children and uh, disabled people uh, which is hands down the most rewarding thing I've ever done. So um, yeah, it's 
I'll tell you a story about one particular person that, that I did. I, so, uh, um, the, I, go I was going to say, the, I, I've dealt personally too with um, dealing with people and helping them. It, it is super rewarding. And yes, tell us about, I do believe this person had a stroke, right? And you helped them come back. I, I'm dying to hear this story and uh, go ahead and tell it. It, 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 uh, <laughs> Listen, I'm a soft guy. I'm a soft guy, right? Yeah, it's fine, buddy. It's just two guys hanging out. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just pause for gameplay a minute and just tell you this because it's a pretty good line. Um, so you're at the driving range. There's the sort of six people that I'm, I'm lining up. Some with, you know, one arm, one leg, and they're they're all right coping. And the, and there were there was a man on there, and um, he'd had a stroke. He'd got no use of his right side. Um, when he would. I could tell that in his eyes that he was frustrated, he couldn't really talk properly and, and so I just stood with him and, and we managed to get him hitting the ball and, and honest to God he hit this ball 20 yard, 30 yards and I could tell he would like, so we hit three balls and he managed to do it and I just give him, impro I, I improvised with him and, and I either helped him or um, and this and I could tell he wanted to talk to me so I got close to him and he, he said that's the first time I've hit a golf ball in 70 years oh. and, it, it, and a tear come down his eye oh. and I, honest to God Waterworks I, Well, I, yeah um, and you know I did it for love of my love, love, for me, for my my time and it was it rewarding and, um, it, it's something that I'd advocate everyone to do and, and see people in, in, in positions where you know we're all lucky if we if, if we're going through life without issues. Um, just spend time giving back and seeing people that are less fortunate, and then it might stop. You're a good dude, wages. Webble. You're a good dude. It's uh, what a fantastic story, and uh, yeah, I'm so proud of you for doing stuff like that. I and mean, it is a privilege to call you my friend. Um, good on you, buddy. Now, in a quick segue, because we went through the turn on nine. And I always ask this. Oh, sorry. When you're golfing out with the mates and you get to the turn on nine, do you just want to plow through and start ten, or are you stopping and having a beer and a bite? Uh, well, I usually have a beer and a bite all the way through, not just at the turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's... Obviously, I can't drink at the minute because of medication, but um, I always stop at the halfway house, but can't go for me straight on there. I'm with you. You gotta a have a beer, beers. beer, beer, a couple of beers, sure, and uh, at least a hot dog. All right, we talked about how many tournament holes you played. Now you're a Royale guy. Oh wait, wait, I gotta ask this: Royale or Royal? What do you say? It. Royal. Royal. I say Royale when I'm talking about it, but it's Royal. <laughs> Drive me crazy. There's a knee on the end. It's Royale. Anyway, how many Royale hash slash Royal shots? Have you taken in these last three and a half years, Webbo? Wow. So you're probably averaging 10, 10, 10 everyone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now a quarter million. <laughs> a quarter <laughs> million Royale shots Webbo has taken in the last three and a half years. Wow. In those quarter million shots, how many TB points have you earned in the last three and a half years? I'm going to give you a hint. You're seven on the all-time leader list for tiebreaker points. Seven. Only six people have more tiebreaker points in Royals than you. How big is that number? <laughs> I have no idea, man. 180 million. <laughs> it's actually 179.1, but we'll, we'll round up. 180 million Royale points. Wow. And you got to think, the most you can get is, is what, like, for 1,800, whatever. You can be dropping out, 2,300, maybe. Most of them are in, like, the 700 to, say, 1,200 range. I should imagine they were all very, they were all very good as well. So, yeah, so you're, yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, I do have the stats on that. You've thrown 208 out of bounds, I think, playing in a Royale. I've got, I've got more stats. Oh, yeah. Actually, Just 208? Might, That's pretty good. Maybe more. Maybe 308, actually. Um, oh, what out, else? Out of bounds. Have? Out of bounds. Like, like out of bounds in a shed, in a in a shed on, on, on Avatown. No, I was right. Out 208 out of bounds on a Royale. 
195,000 of your shots have hit the green. 20,000 Royale shots you've hit into the hole. So you've sunk 20,000 shots in a Royale. And we'll get uh, eight points for that. 4,300 uh, into the rough. No, but that's just impressive. 20,000. Uh, what else is an impressive number? Total shots in the entire that you've taken ever, 333,000. 333,000 so, uh, shots. I don't know if that, uh, yeah. I should imagine there's a lot of people that higher than me. I, I don't tend to replay a lot. No. But Royale, so in a tournament, you're going to take whatever, 36 uh, or probably 45. Oh, he leaves it shh. Short, just that is, barely short. That is the story of my life on that on this game. That's all right. It happens. If it was a tour pro, it would have got in. And you're actually just helping the players here because, oh, yeah. yeah, we're doing it all for the people. Uh, uh, Webo giving back to everybody. As always. So obviously, you played whatever 1,971 tournaments in this game. What? And you're playing yeah. Whispering Pines today. What's your favorite in-game course, Webbo? Um, I think I like Tory Pines. It's just such an iconic course in the real world, yeah. too. I mean, obviously, I'm a big golfer. Um, and I'd have probably said Arbor Town or Kiwa, because we know what would have been happening next week. Yes, I didn't want to bring it up. Um, and But I'll delay that trip till next year now and uh, and once I've been to Arbor Town I'll kill it I'll probably change but Torrey Pines is good obviously I've played Close House I've played London Club they are top top golf courses great places to play um, but yeah I, I, there's just something about golf you know abroad for me it, uh, it's it's cool because I'm kind of the same way. It's uh, like Torrey Pines, obviously a bucket list. You want to golf that. Harbour Town, phenomenal. But you just say Close House in London. I'm the same way. I would rather play those. <laughs> really? What a time to sneeze. <laughs> um, I would rather go overseas and play those just because it's, it's something foreign, right? It's something cool. It's something strange. It's something new. It's Well, yeah, wait, you're on holiday. You're not thinking about work. You're not thinking about getting... Yeah. Home, you know... That, that's that's kind of you know I me mean, I like melodies so what is your what's the favorite course no let's not do that let's do it this way I give you ten thousand dollars you can go play any course in the world tomorrow real world where are you going what are you playing if I could play any course in the world yeah. with no restrictions no restrictions to... you want to play Augusta you can play Augusta Augusta was that it yeah it's Why, so yeah. iconic and it's the fact that you just can't play it yeah that's that that that's why it's predictable but but uh, i mean like i said i was a good a good golfer at college i played some top classes i, I remember at royal living st anne's um so i got to play rounds there st andrews i shot on oh. par at st andrews now there are a handful of people that have played st andrews the old course in this world and there is an even smaller group that have shot under par at st andrews dude yeah, that is incredible. So, uh, but St Andrews is for me, it's easy. And this sounds that sounds mad, does that? It, obviously, it's all dependent on weather, and links links is dependent on weather. Uh, but but it's that wide. You can just last driver and, and a bit like we used to play on the game, where you just hit driver as far as you can. And just yep, grip it and rip it, um, rather than having to play to big foot range. So. I've heard that you've played around uh, with Matt Fitzpatrick. <laughs> I'm going to fall out with him. It's going to cause divorces, is this? <laughs> I wonder if you could maybe, keeping in mind that we might have non-adults watching this, uh, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, how that round went or that how that day went. Well, it haunts me forever through my little boy as well as this. Um so like I said, I played for, for you know at uni level. Um, I was seventeen, sort of eighteen, um, and I was the last junior, it, the junior county team. We played against Matthew Fitzpatrick. Uh, I played. He was twelve years old, and this guy, honest to God, it, I, 
can't display or can't explain how much of a magician he was at 12 years old. And keep in mind, he was using the putter that he won the US Open with. Yeah. When when he played with the exact same one, a yes putter. Um. So he, yeah, I took him to the 18th and he beat me on the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on. He's twelve, and you were. <laughs> he's twelve. He's twelve. Playing off, I think he was playing off about three handicap, and I was off. Probably back then, maybe scratch. Back then. Um, well, my coach at the time, or the, the captain of the team, said, "You'll never play for me ever again." <laughs> really? Well, they just see me losing to a twelve-year-old. Obviously, they don't see what's happening. And... Meanwhile, he is. He is. Legit, unbelievable. unbelievable. You, like outside of that, it's like as a good Canadian not, kid, you see these these Canadian little hockey players, right? Going, okay, there, there's good players, and then there's next level, and that's like PGA, like you said, U.S. Open winner. I I actually went to uh, went to the bookies the day after to back him to win a major by time he was thirty, but the odds weren't good enough, so I never did it. But um, <laughs> it was. It was an exhibition, and to be honest, that's when I realised I wasn't going to be good enough to be a golfer, to earn money doing golf. Um, I bet you'd destroy him at Ultimate Golf, though. Yeah, gosh, I would, yeah. <laughs> yes! Every time he's on the leaderboard, my little boy comes up to me and goes, Daddy, ain't that who beat you? <laughs> <laughs> Every time, without fail. So, yeah. And it won't be it won't my, it won't my dad that told him. <laughs> that but is yeah, very so good. good. I used to play against Danny Willett as well, but in the same he played for the same union. Okay. All right, so we're watching Webo set up a hive eight here on number sixteen at Whispering Pines. Whispering Pines, first fourteen on the easier side of our golf courses. This course comes down to 15, 16, 17 and 18 more often than not when playing at the higher level level it's tough controlling that backspin especially when using a pro D he's got a little little meat left on the bone here with this putt but he'll drop that especially when I pull it too far yes, yeah a little bit a little bit of an over adjust that's alright we're just playing for fun you're helping the people um it wouldn't be fair for us to go through an interview like this without you giving out some Roy Al tips. So I was wondering if you can give out some of those top, that secret sauce, some of that Webos wonders. Give us give us some well, Roy Al juice there, Webo. So obviously watch watch the channels, watch the YouTube channels, watch how, how the quick shot technique happens. Um, and then from there, um, I'd start with your rough iron yellow jacket, um, uh, then orca, because that's pretty much if you drag straight back, so let me just show it on my screen now, if you drag it straight back and let go there, that's what we mean by um, quick shot. Now um, the yellow jacket and orca, because the needle's so quick, if you drag it straight back it's pretty accurate and it's it'll get you a great shot or a good shot and you'll get somewhere near, so work on that and keep playing it and playing it and playing it until you get that good and then you can move up to your wedges where you have to delay that release a little bit um, but, but my biggest tips is get that golf ball stopped stop moving as quickly as you can yeah yeah full backspin so early on uh it might you might end up using different clubs whatever i think whatever rough iron or sand wedge that has the most backspin is probably your best bet and then definitely as you're in the in the higher club levels yeah yellow jacket orca for all the standard ones now people will go aside and, and start experimenting with adobe and phoenix and that once you get into like the blitz royales and that the ones where you're doing a lot of aiming but you can find a lot of success rocking the yellow jacket and the orca and you don't even need to be using big fancy balls and everything just for the royales um you can get away with it with a with a lesser ball if you get that speed up I mean, ultimately, we all got better by playing more stuff. So you know, don't just don't is. just give up. Don't just give up. You know, try it. Repetition. Oh. We're getting the holes. Not bad for a pro D approach. Little sniff at Albatross there for a seventeen eighty eight. 
We are playing a VIP Royale here at Whispering Pines with Royale legend, whiskey business member, and my brother, Webbo. We're looking at a 25 under as we head to hole 18. Webbo, we're going to give this hole to you. Anything you want to talk about, bring up, chat about, mention. This is all you, buddy. I mean, for starters, you know, um, kudos to Mike. I, I, I've, you know, I've got on Mike's case from day one, um, and that's just out of love for the game and to help him improve it. But he's created an absolute brilliant game that everybody, you know, loves. The community is great. The people are good. You know, he's made mistakes. We've made mistakes. We all make mistakes. You know, and he's open to ideas and, and, and to get better from it. Um, I've spent. 250 million thousand shots or whatever it is you just said <laughs> yeah. from this game so <laughs> so I must it must I must enjoy it you know um, it's just good it's good the community is good anybody that's out there that's thinking that they're miles away from the top ask questions don't be scared people don't buy it. there's nobody that's going to say no I'm not help you um, the only way you're going to get better is by learning from best don't hate them just get better at them better at it with their help i always say on these if you're not a member of a country club go out and find a country club and if the first one you join doesn't suit you go f change up find another one country clubs i think changed they like changed my life <laughs> i got like 50 new friends now best friends it's awesome. We could have a world tour, a whiskey business world tour. <laughs> it's uh, well, we're having a little whiskey business meetup this weekend. Actually, it's it's legitimately like, these guys are my friends. All right, let's watch so, this approach shot. So there's a quick shout out, quick yeah, shout out and off to obviously the the original elite guys that were in there, you know, from day one, um, and then the whiskey business, you know, past and new. Um, cheers, guys, for being being you and, and you know supporting me. Um, from day one and supporting each other as well it's great to see for sure all right approach shot on 18 is away let's see if we can finish with a bang here oh look at this oh it didn't want to come back but hell of an approach shot with that pro d1 Hopefully here we can get some people some goodies whispering pines yes people you're gonna go ahead he missed a couple fairways too off the tee, which is going to help your driving distance. We're looking at minus 26, the score to beat. Webbo playing ultimate golf. Buddy, thank you so much for doing this. You've been a good friend of mine for years now. Uh, let's get that leg healed. And I cannot wait to one day either you come this way or I go that way and tip a pine with you, buddy. We've got to do Cheltenham and we'll do the London Club. And do that i'm in i'm so in all right everybody he's webbo i'm duff his youtube channel ultimate golf elite go find it and subscribe right now this has been another vip tournament here on ultimate golf and we'll see you next time cheers duff <laughs>